Mariam joins me now from Zurich. And Mariam, the bank missed estimates, but what did actually Brady Dugan have to say about that? Yeah, well, you know, I suppose, Francine, there were three big takeaways from these earnings. You had uh, the announcement of 1,500 more job cuts on top of the 2,000 that had already been uh, announced. That was back in July. You had the reorganization of the securities division, uh, and with that, a reduction in the fixed income side of the business by 50 percent, and then an expansion into emerging markets, Brazil, Asia, China. But just listen to, to some of the general comments Brady Dugan made uh, about these results. Our objective has been to really be ahead of the curve, to adopt quickly to the changes in the markets and the regulatory environment. I think we've done a very good job of that so far, and I think the measures we've announced today really are uh, continuing to keep us ahead of the curve and really being able to act proactively to make sure that our business can return, can mm. make very good returns, even in difficult market conditions and under the new regulatory environment. So we think these are the appropriate steps mm. to take um, over the next couple of years and really put our business in a very strong position to give best-of-class returns, even in more difficult market conditions, should they continue. Does that mean that you wouldn't rule out further cuts in the coming months? Well, we think this is the right plan for us um, over the next couple of years. Obviously, we need to continue to be dynamic in the way we look at the business, but um, we think this is a very good set of long-term measures that will put us in a place mm -hmm. to provide best-in-class returns in the industry and really keep us at the forefront of performance in the industry. Uh, and so you were hearing Francine Brady Dugan speaking there about difficult market conditions and how that has weighed on earnings. And, of course, this was plain to see when you just look at their investment banking revenue down by the most uh, since 2008. And so I asked him then about the general outlook for investment banking and if the climate now is worse to the situation that we saw in 2008. The biggest uh, efforts within the investment bank are really making sure we get back to an investment banking business that can make a return on equity that's in excess of the group's 15 percent target. And the plans that we've announced actually uh, mean that every single division within investment banking produces a return that's above that 15 percent. So a lot of that is really around RWA mitigation, mm. reducing the capital required in the business, particularly in the fixed income side of the business and making sure that we're making very substantial returns in our investment banking business um, on an ongoing basis. But we have, uh, we have return on equity of 11.8% for the nine months, so I suppose meeting that goal of 15% is going to be very difficult given the tough environment that we're in? Well, I think actually a 12% return on equity in the first nine months of this year is pretty much a best-in-class return on equity in the industry. It's obviously been a difficult nine months. so. Um, I think that actually represents a very good return in this environment. But we think with the changes that we're putting in place, we absolutely will have a business that can make an excess of our target of 15 percent over time. So, um, you know, is it easy? No, mm. it's not easy. But we think the steps that we've announced um, do put us in a very good position to make that happen. As you outlined in your report, a difficult global environment that we're, we're dealing with a great deal of, of volatility in the markets as well. You say that you might increase your return on equity above 15 percent over time. Can you give us some sort of time scale because the outlook isn't looking too great right now? Well, I think obviously it does very much depend on market conditions. I mean, I would also point out that since the beginning of 2009, we actually have made a 14.9 percent return on equity over that entire period of time. And obviously that's include, so included some good markets like 2009, but also some pretty challenging ones. So um, our belief is that if we can get reasonable markets, we definitely have a business model that will make, you know, very good returns on equity and really best in class in the industry. I mean, really, it, you can see that Brady Dugan obviously very keen to say that return on equity, the benchmark performance for the bank, is doing very well in some very tough conditions. Uh, but the fact is uh, that if you just look at these results, we're looking at return on equity of 8.7% in the third quarter, 11.8% for the nine months so far, so already you can sense that there is, there is a struggle there in terms of meeting the 12 percent target. Uh, and of course, it's very difficult to divorce that from the broader macroeconomic situation. And I asked him about his thoughts on this. He said that uh, the, the summit that we had in Brussels last week, uh, the efforts that were made in terms of bank recapitalization, leveraging the EFSF, gave him some cause for confidence. There were still details to be worked out, though. There was still a sense of concern on his part about the broader outlook for growth in the Eurozone. He said the future lies in emerging markets.
I think the developed markets, including Europe, the U.S., um, Japan, are going to grow more slowly than those than those than the uh, faster growing parts of the world. I think that's you know pretty obvious. Um, we still see good opportunities, obviously, within Europe, within the U.S., um, and we have strong businesses in those areas. But they are going to experience a slower growth than the other parts of the world. How does the current market outlook for investment banking compare to the situation that we had in 2008? Well, I think clearly the volatility in the markets is similar in terms of, uh, you know, the fact that people are, um, you know, taking a much more conservative approach to how they, uh, how they actually conduct themselves in financial matters, whether it be corporations or individuals. Um, I think that, um, you know, clearly people have been through this mm -hmm. now a couple of times, so it's a little bit different from that point of view. But I think certainly we need to have, um, you know, a period of more stability before we can get the markets and players in the markets, um, you know, acting in a more consistent way over time. So how do we then restore confidence so that that happens? Well, I think that, um, you know, again, a number of the measures that have been taken by governments, central banks around the world, a number of the things that um, our industry is doing are helping to um, address some of the issues. But I don't think these are issues that are, you know, very, e very quickly or easily resolved. I think it takes mm. time. And it takes us doing the right thing over a period of time in order to get um, the right kind of result. I mean, if there is one thing that you could really pinpoint, that you could focus, that would help bring some measure of stability to markets, to uh, perhaps the way many investors are feeling right now, what would that be? Well, I think, you know, we've probably been one of the most um, constructive players in terms of uh, working together with regulators to make the markets um, safer and sounder over time. And so I think the industry has done a lot, uh, but I think we need to continue to make sure that the banking industry is doing its part um, to, you know, mm. bring uh, safer and sounder markets, uh, you know, in, into, uh, into being around the world. And I think we've done a lot, uh, but there still, I think, are additional steps that need to be taken.